Can everybody ban everybody that just talked about FIFA, you know? Because those are spammers. Thanks, wrenches. I appreciate you guys. FIFA Inu BSC. I hate you spammers. I hate you scammers. I hate you with a passion. <laughs> I took the wrench army crazy. It's funny. Uh, shills in the chat with FIFA. This is true. Listen. If you're gonna, if everybody's gonna talk about one specific pro product that no one's ever heard of, you're gonna get banned. So that's that. I don't have time for your nonsense. Uh, let's see. This is a good question. Luis Garcia. Rob, don't you think they're replacing all the vampire middleman bankers with DeFi would reduce personal corporate expenses and have a deflationary effect? It could, but then. You know, you have to understand, like, when you take away one job, uh, you may actually create another job over here. And one of those things that I see as a problem with DeFi, you know, we've lost $2.6 billion, $2.6 billion in DeFi. And they say that uh, this year in 2022 is going to be the worst year. 2022 is going to be this, the worst year for DeFi after all the things that we've grown. So I think that DeFi has got a long way to go to that, for that to happen. But yes, he will eliminate middlemen and there will be uh, a deflationary effect or a reduction in cost for the banks themselves. However, I think they're going to have to beef up uh, other parts of that, whether that be uh, security, CTOs, technical advice, and go from there. That's what I think. I could be wrong, though. Uh... <laughs> you, know, you know what? That's funny. Crypto Gold, there's got to be easier channels to spam than this one. It's almost like it's like walking into a cop bar and trying to rob rob the bar. You're like, why would you spam this? I have nothing but admins here. That was fun. <laughs> Corey, crazy George is building a house right now. Well, there, Corey, that's not a bad idea actually. If you think about it. If that. I'm, if that's George, Crypto's are us. You know, if you have land, the only way that would work pretty well is if you pay cash for it. That would work out pretty well. Uh, the cost of labor is going to go up anyhow. So yeah, the thing is, the thing where people get caught is the interest rates going up. So like the, the same thing we've seen, like a $600,000 house uh, at an interest rate of 2.9% uh, versus one right now hovering around 7%, it's like a thousand bucks less. So essentially the same house, you're paying a thousand bucks more per month on the mortgage because the amortization table. So for that one, uh, loans don't work out too great. But if you're building and you're doing straight cash, it could work. I just wouldn't take a loan out right now. Uh. <laughs> Funny. That's a good one. You can dodge a ball, but you can't dodge the wrench army. That's one. Ah, Bicky, I'm glad you're here. Bicky, did you message me personally about doing something... I forgot what it was, but it was on Twitter. I want to make sure it's your account because I don't. I'm very skeptical. Uh, Mr. Khalid, very smart. Dollar cost averaging is the way to go in the bear market. I have to agree. I have to agree. Because I got to tell you, I look at. Um, we all know this website, the DCACC. DCACC website itself. Like, there was times when, let's say, 25 bucks a week. There was times in uh, the past, because I got into Cardano pretty heavy. I started around here, February 2018, somewhere around there. And I was accumulating Cardano because it was cheap. But then I stopped for a while because I got a little bit... Um, angry at the market. Like I know we all do. It happens. It's okay. And, um, if, if I would have kept buying, I mean, I increased my buying, uh, more than 25 bucks a week, but, but if, if I would have kept buying, look how much, just 25 bucks a week at the tippy, tippy top. Hold on. Well, that's Bitcoin genius. So maybe you should put it on Cardano like you were talking about. There we are. 
So like at the tippy top, I mean, you put in 4,600 bucks, 25 bucks a week and you get $162,000 out. It's not bad. Again, diminishing returns. But if I always think about this specific chart when I'm dollar cost averaging right now, because I'm like, I am not going to stop DCAing just because I think that there's this, you know, there's a chart out there or there's something that says, no, this is going to go down or this is going to go up. I don't know. And no one knows. But uh, just like we talked about in a couple of videos ago, uh, which was uh, the Stockdale par paradox. And the thing that kills momentum is excessive hope. And you, you, can, you can watch the video. Um, Jim Stockdale, he was shot down in uh, Vietnam and he was in the uh, Hotel Hanoi where he was uh, uh, beaten and, and uh, tortured for seven straight years. And they asked him, Why did you, how did you get out? How did you make it? Why did that become your defining moment? He goes, well, it's because I realized the brutal reality of the situation. Because I knew I would get out at some point. I just didn't know when. And the people that would get crushed were the ones that were telling me, hey, we're going to get out in Easter. Hey, we're going to get out. I heard something that we're going to get out in, in Christmas. Doesn't that sound like crypto? And he goes, I just didn't listen to those guys. And those guys would, he said they would perish because they died of a broken heart. That's exactly what he said. And uh, I see the same thing. And it, it, it gives you like a reality of what, where we are right now in crypto. Like you see these, these hopium peddlers and they're like, well, by the end of the year, it's going to go to this or it's going to crash all the way to this. I don't know. I just think of where it is. I, I know that we're going to go up because bear markets don't last forever. Bull markets don't last forever. I know we will go up. I just don't know when. I think it's around 2025. Shh, who knows? If it takes me to 2027, 2028, so much the better. And guess what? The chart that I just showed you, well, that just means I get to keep dollar cost averaging. All right. I'll take some profits on the way. Shoot me. That's it. All right. What else? Yeah. Andrew says, Rob, you ain't, you, you ain't taking the consideration that China left the game halfway up the last bull. So the peak and oil will not play the same. Look, Asian markets are a little bit different just because China, <laughs> first of all, just because China says they're out of the game, there's people that are still in the game. They can get around it. There's a reason why, like even if you look at Bitcoin mining, that was banned a long time ago, right? Well, guess what? There's still Bitcoin miners in China. They're able to get around uh, the Great Firewall. So I still believe there's uh, investors, not as many as before, but it doesn't matter because globally, you know, less than 5% globally of people are into crypto. Look, I still think there's a lot of room to run. And if you take a look at the amount of money that's sloshing around, I talk about this all the time. You know, there's like over $100 trillion in the, in the stock market. You think those people want to keep getting slaughtered over there for a while? There's a reason why BlackRock and Mass Mutual and all those big names are getting into cryptos because they're like, wow, we can't get returns. I mean, you can get a whopping 8.6% in the S&P 500 year over year. Whoa. I do that on a Tuesday sometimes for crypto. So for them, they're probably like, let's just allocate 1% to 3% right? That's what Ray Dalio talks about. If we do that, we're good to go. We don't need China. I don't need China, period. True. Wrench Army has a cult. <laughs> see, see, we'll go read. Um, yes, and the Matic cult and the, and the Bitcoin cult and everybody, they're all cults. That's okay. I'm telling you. CrossFit. It, <laughs> CrossFit, if you miss a workout, they're like, hey, bro, what happened to you? Okay. You, you, you know, you missed a wad today. I'm like, oh, Jesus. So, yeah. Let's see. Breach. Yeah. So, Jupiter is a good point. Research the past Fed pivots and how peak unemployment ranges, ranges averages 12 to 18 months after that pivot. That was going to be painful, the plenty of time. This, it's weird. It's weird because I think it plays into the same thing we've been talking about for a while. Like we know, and we talked about this too, about how once the Fed pivots, they're going to overcorrect. I think we all know that, right? The Fed's going to overcorrect. Uh, they're going to pivot at some point and go, hey, look at this data from eight months ago. Looks like, looks good. That's just how it is. And uh, at that point, that things are going to start to crumble a little bit. We're going to see more unemployment. I think, I'm not for sure. Did you know that right now there are 10.8 million jobs open and there are 5.2, no, no, sorry. There's 10.2 million jobs open in the United States. There are 5.2 million job lookers, 
What does that mean? It means we got a lot of jobs. So I don't know if that employment is going to go down anytime soon. But let's just say like next year we go into recession and then unemployment does actually go up and all these factors fit in. It's the same thing we've been talking about as far as like where things line up for the cycles. And for me, like let's just say for example, in 2023 we hit that recession. Well, 12 to 18 months, where does that put us? Well, 2024. And what happens after that? Usually an all-time high because that's the Bitcoin having. Maybe it comes early, maybe it comes later. I don't know. Again, uh, I can't give you the, the con I've learned my lesson to never give concrete time frames. This could be a year off, two years off. I don't know, but I got time to DCA and I'm okay with that. So yeah, good point, Jupiter. Thank you. <laughs> that sucks, Macron. We talked about the French thing today. Macron is shady as hell. Macron is a politician. They're all shady as hell. Community is important. And Douglas is right. CrossFit is an amazing call. Huge community. Huge community. Just like Apple. Apple's bigger than that, but they, they calm down. <laughs> Smart coin. Uh, yeah, golf it's the best part of my day, too. After this, I have to go out to the facility and dig up some uh, a trench. Long story. <laughs> Ron, do you talk to yourself a lot? You're a natural. I do talk to myself a lot because I'm the only one that uh, will listen. The only problem is when you talk to yourself is if someone answers back, then you got problems. <laughs> Michael says, Rob, when I can't sleep, I'm watching your show. I will fall asleep easily in no time. Thank you. I'm glad I could bore you to tears. That was a, a, that was a good one. Let's see. I do appreciate you guys. Uh, question from Jason Russell. Have you heard of Overland? Do you invest in land NFTs? Over as a token, they have an app, live marketplace, and are in Polygon. Look, a lot of the great, a lot of the good uh, metaverse plays and play to earn games are built on Polygon. Polygon is Polygon Studios. And those are the ones that reach out to, to the, the games that are already in web two essentially and bring them into web three. I think if they're on Polygon, they probably do pretty well. I don't know exactly what it is. So I really, nah, I really can't say it. they'll do well. They're, they, they've picked correctly, I should say, on Polygon. If you want to know anything about games, play to earn or metaverse, go watch Crypto Stash. That guy's got tons of information about those things. So yes. I just, I just defer to smarter people like, like Stash and those guys. Mm, oh, here we go. Fantastic. My favorite scammers are back. So wrenches, you know what to do. Christian has a great question. Rob, will the Fed end up settling for 4 to 5% inflation? And you know what? We, we, we talked about this yesterday. And uh, there was an article... Economist, I forgot his name, Frazier. And, uh, and he had done a lot of different things with, uh, with, with hedge funds. He was in the traditional market space. And he talked about how he believes that the Fed will, the goal is 2%, but the Fed won't hit that. They'll get down to 4 to 5% and they'll say, well, that's good enough. And then they'll kind of go from there. So I think, sure, why not? Uh, if it can actually do that and actually maintain and people can get used to it, then uh, I don't see why they would uh, not keep going. Again, the Fed has been very clear, though, very clear. Um, even uh, Mary Daly from the uh, San Francisco Fed president, she was on, we did a video on her too, and she talked about how she's like, basically she's like, let me make this super clear. We're not going to stop until we hit 2%. And we take a look at uh, the data, you, whatever data they're looking at, and uh, we won't do that. I think um, I think they're going to still keep going on. So we'll see. Uh, ba -ba -ba. What's your call on the November rate hike? 75 to be safe. I'd like them to do 100. Get it. You know, I was calling for 100 basis points in the first rate hikes. I was like, just get it over with. But no, no, we'll do 25 and 50. And... Uh, you know, they should have been a little bit more aggressive. 
Yeah, CTO did just did a show on Aptos. I think he called it the um, uh, the Solana killer, but he's going to pass on it. So I wonder. Smash the like, Rob. Thank you. Okay, Bicky, you did. Bicky, I will answer you today. Good deal. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Pi Pirate X Pirate says buy the dip. I don't even, you know, people talk about buy, buy the dip. I don't really get into that, the buy the dip thing. I don't really put e any more money in or any money less for the dips. I just think that we're going to keep dipping. So I'm just like, well, I'm just going to let do the same amount every day. Uh, it buys it in the background. I am personally using Coinbase. Used to use Voyager. Love that app. So simple. We know what happened to that. And uh, yeah, every day. Just buy. There's there, Well, there's some I buy every day and there's some I buy every week. And I do buy altcoins. And Jason, I think I got you. <laughs> Could Walmart use DeFi to avoid credit card margins? You know, the thing with that is, is this. I don't know why any company would use DeFi right now, honestly. Uh, I, I just don't think it's ready for prime time. Call, tell me where I'm wrong. But uh, there's, there's especially those, uh, those bridge hacks and... Uh, and trying to you know do do cross chain transactions, I just don't see it. Uh, I think the better option. Jack Mahler's had a pretty good presentation on using the Lightning Network to get rid of transaction fees. I got to tell you, if if that worked for my small company, I would adopt it right now. You know how much I pay for transaction fees? It depends on who you use. We use PayPal. And we also use Stripe, and mostly the, they're pretty much the same along the lines. It's 2.99% plus 30 cents per transaction fees. And depending on the volume, you can go to 1.99 or even 1.29%, uh, which doesn't sound like a lot. But let's say you're doing 3% of a million dollars. Now think about that. It is tax deductible, but it's a real pain in the A, and I hate doing it. So uh, I don't think DeFi is their answer. Darth Mike. Orlando says, hey, Rob, do you think you could give us a video on your Amazon business, how you started it? If you think it's something worth looking into, what do you recommend? Rex like cash. Amazon's a tough business right now. Uh, we're coming into Q4, so everybody's kind of loading up uh, to get with the uh, Christmas rush. So right now is like the worst time. And honestly, Amazon's a boring business. It's very simple, though. You just meet with manufacturers or distributors and, well, over the online, obviously. And you say, what do you guys got? Give me a spreadsheet. It sends you a spreadsheet. You run it through a program. You see what the profit margins are. You go, okay, give me 10,000 of these products. They don't ship to you. They ship right to the Amazon warehouses. And you have to pay for them to put the actual uh, labels on. You have to do all the tracking, all this stuff. And then you pay a fee to Amazon. I personally find it super boring and I don't even like doing it anymore. So um, for that one, no, I probably won't do it. But um, if you want to look at from who I learned from, his name is Bo Crable, B-A-B-E-A-U, Crab Ill, Crable, C-R-A-B-I-L-L. -L. That's who I learned from. Smart kid. All right. Still open to break 85. Oh, for the Solana. Yeah, Solana. I, I buy Solana. I buy Cardano. I buy Nier. Corey says, I'm so glad you're talking about taking profits on the way when almost everyone else in crypto talks about hold forever. Whew, Corey, I don't get it. I don't get it. I never really understood that, hold forever. I know people believe that the world's going to crash and it's only going to be Bitcoins, the world reserve currency. Could be. But the question is when? Again, uh, Stockdale paradox. Um, if you're hoping for it to happen at a certain time point, it's not going to happen. If you keep building and building and building, and if your job is to, even if you think that it's going to happen, if, if your job is to acquire more Bitcoin, more Ethereum, more crypto, whatever it is, wouldn't it behoove you to sell in these, you know, as time starts to slide down? That's just what I do. That's not for everybody. People are like, I don't care what you do, Rob. I'm going to do what I do, which is I'm buying every day and I'm going to keep buying for 50 years. That's fine. 
It's just on this channel, I'm not going to talk like that. It doesn't make it does to me. It doesn't make any sense. And there's a big difference between you. There's a, there's a big difference between most of us normal investors and say a Michael Saylor, who's runs a billion dollar company. I don't know if he even runs it anymore. And their investment strategy. You have to understand what they do and what you do and you know what your risk tolerance is and what your time horizon is. That's the bigger thing. Uh, good one. Aqua Silicon. Going into 2024, anticipation of the Bitcoin halving, it might pump prior to moving into 2024. Remember, when we start to hear about the Bitcoin halving, there's always a little bit of a pump. And even right now, the bear market, we have bear market rallies. That's the thing that people forget is like, it's not just goes down forever. There's rallies. And during those rallies, see, that's the great thing of dollar cost averaging. It's, it's like planting seeds, you know? So like, let's say you plant seeds for a season, which is right now. And then as time moves forward, then you start to take out the harvest from back here in January, February, March, or whatever it was. Or so, sorry, sorry. No, that's not the time frame. June, July, August, we'll say, right? Let's say June, July, August during the, during the low times. As time moves forward, you start to harvest those ones from back here. And then you keep dollar cost averaging along the way. And during that time, let's say in January, February, March, whatever else it is, maybe it jumps up. Then you start planting. You just plant, plant, plant. And as it goes up, you, then you harvest over here. Plant, plant, plant. And then goes up, harvest down here. It's a very simple thing. I mean, that's just what I do. But you don't have to do that. And that's it. Uh, FT, Rob, have been able to use the stats from Smiles. So there's two apps I use to gain crypto. One is called Smiles or S Miles, Satoshi Miles. And the link's in the description and it's 100% free. And for all the, I think it's like a thousand steps, you get like 0. 0.000 something Satoshis, which is cool. It, it adds up and you get free, free crypto, right? Free Satoshis. I haven't taken a look at it. It just sits on. It just sits in the background of my, of my, of my phone. So I haven't taken a look at it. And the other one is uh, Sweatcoin, as I talk about. But uh, I haven't used this. Let's find out. Just hold on. So again, link in the description. I have to update it. I don't see anything on this thing. Huh. Maybe it's a new, uh, maybe it's an update. Try to update your app and see where it goes from. Mm. Oh, five or 19 days left. Who's got the website for the uh, Bitcoin countdown? Bitcoin having countdown. Now oh, it's right here. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Just go to Coin Market Cap. Coin Market Coin Market Cap dot com having forward slash Bitcoin. Five hundred thirty nine days. Very well. We got time. So if you were looking to dollar cross average, <laughs> listen. Nobody cares about crypto right now except us. There's only the all the tourists and all the people they are gone. And it's just us, the, the diehards, which will be rewarded, I think, later on. So if this was your time, this is your time. Hi, Rob, one Lambo. I don't know. That's a good question. Two years, four years, five years? It's within 10 years. I can, I'm pretty sure about that. Yeah, I remember this one. Ryan Kim Kerman says a good one. VGX is going to expand to France before it went under. Awful. Rob, is Harvest Finance any good? I don't know enough about it to tell you, and I will not talk to you, talk to people of things I haven't done enough research in. So sorry, I don't know. Swiss Borg, the Fossils. Uh, a lot of people are shilling Aptos. I don't know why. Go watch CTO's video on it. That guy's pretty thorough. And uh, see what he says. Oh, John Velasquez, super sticker. Thank you. I appreciate it. Two bucks. Ah. Could I, is that a green screen? Yes. Green screen. My mom allowed me to put it up in her basement and uh, feeling pretty good about that. 
That's right. Uh, let's see. So Eric says, oh my God, I see 50 plus spam links in your video description. Where's the link for the source of title? Just do a search. Isn't that more important? Uh, I'm not here to do all the work for you, man. Uh, if you want to search it out, go right ahead. However, if you need help with your crypto taxes, go to cryptotrader.tax. Those guys are really good. Or sorry, Coin Ledger right now. Also, if you could help out Puerto Rico, the problems that I don't there's a there's a, uh, links down there to uh, donate there. And then uh, oh, a couple of things, a bunch of links down so you can find it. Hope that answers your question. Hope you come back, Eric. I'd love to talk to you. Uh, uh. Hey, Rob, have you ever seen any video produced by the Maverick of Wall Street? He does amazing fundamental analysis on markets to the point with great sense of humor. I'll have to check him out. Thank you. The Maverick of Wall Street. It's pretty good. Oh, I got it. You're right. I don't know. Hit the like button. I like that. If you hit the like button, I like that. Yeah. 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 Chart prediction on Cosmos. I have no idea. But the video on how to uh, stake your Cosmos within your ledger so you can retain your private keys will be out on Friday as I'm traveling to um, Houston. And then I traveled to Puerto Rico after that. So uh, check that out. I think Cosmos is a great, it's a great play. I buy, I dollar cost average Cosmos, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Gensler insists you need to do something about the forearm to head ratio in your thumbnails. This one, the one that I always use, I'm too lazy to get any other pictures. Look, Gary watched the show. And I know he, I know he wants to do what's best. Gary, do what's best, and uh, for the American people, and come to grips with the fact that you need to reach across the aisle and work with the CFTC and uh, the lawmakers to put us in. I mean, do you really want France to pass us by? Well, you're letting that happen. Uh, well, Martine, good advice. Warren Buffett says, "Don't fall in love with the stock." Focus on the company as an investment and when to buy, sell. Crypto is no different. Very true. Very true. Any thoughts about Voyager for tomorrow? I don't know, but Pat Ackerman put out a pretty good uh, tweet. Uh, all the different documentation is out. 275 plus on what's going on. And it looks like it's going to be an aggregate of what we're going to get back. So we're going to get back 70% roughly. Uh, but then it's an aggregate of over 20 or 21 days uh, for price appreciation, depreciation. I'll let you know exactly what it is later, but things are moving forward and it already comes down to, are we going to vote for that FTX plan? Depends on what you want to do. Me personally, you know, chapter 11s can go quite a long time, quite a long time. I just, we just did a story about Delta and how it took them. It was, it was a fast chapter 11 at 19 months. And then I took a look at uh, Mount Gox you know, Mount Gox, that hack happened in 2014. Eight years later, people are still waiting for their funds. I'm not going to be that guy. So it depends on what you want to do. Me personally, I'm like, well, if you give me my crypto back, I'm honestly not going to sell it now because it's not time to sell. So, but I would really hate to see everything slip through the cracks for so many years. And then it talks about how if you don't want to do the chapter, the, um, the buyout, or don't vote for the buyout for FTX, which is at 70 or 72%, then you're looking at around 60 some percent. I'm like, ugh, no thanks. Douglas says, S miles doesn't always work. I ran 11K yesterday, geez, and it gave me nothing. I walked 9K today and it worked, a little annoying, but it's free Satoshi. Yeah, it's free, it's free. I like free. Robin says, now's the time to buy. Cult, from the French word culte, meaning worship. Interesting. <laughs> and Patient Monk says, what do you think of the influence of the Mount Gox payout will be early next year? February, I believe. I don't know. I've heard there's so many payouts coming up. And from what I understand, that's not the payout. As I understand it, it's these are the last days to submit some type of form and uh, for what you could potentially get paid out. And we'll look at it. 
But I remember we weren't, wasn't every time on Mount Gox six months ago and then a year ago and then two years ago, watch out for Mount Gox. If you put into YouTube Mount Gox, the amount of videos that come out every like six months is astronomical, it seems like. And no one has like the concrete date of when it actually goes through to where people actually get back their Bitcoin. And I will just say this, there's three things they can get. They can get Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, or cash. That's is what, as, as I read in the documentation. Me personally, I would sell some. If I was buying Bitcoin back in 2014 for, what was it? A hundred, yeah, it's between a hundred and a thousand. Well, if 2013 was a thousand roughly, let's say 284 bucks. I don't know, 200 bucks. I had 200 bucks and I bought a bunch of Bitcoin. I'd probably sell some. Now, now's not the time to sell. I'd probably wait a little bit longer. That's just me. But if you can imagine like somebody, an early, early investor just waiting eight years, I would just sell out of hate because uh, I'm like, the hell with this stuff. And off you go. I don't think everybody's, and people say, I think everybody's going to hold. They're not going to hold. Just like people told me in 2021, but Rob, you don't understand institutions, they'll never sell. They'll hear forever and they're going to hold. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we'll thank her. As soon as she gets me that meatloaf. Let's see. They do have a very nice house. They worked hard though. They're just trying to kick me out. I will not leave. Will Trump be up for 2024? Was it? Probably. Uh, remember the thumbs up. What's your prediction for a bottom? No idea. We talked about, you know, how everybody says that some people think that Bitcoin will rally at the end of the year because of the, after the midterms, which markets usually rally about three months after the midterms. And then some people say, you know, just a little rally, maybe to 25, like we talked about. And then other people will say it's gonna go to 12 or eight, or some people even say 3000, which I think is pretty crazy, but anything could be. I think maybe everybody's just in the middle. Maybe we're, we won't rally, maybe we won't go to 3K, maybe somewhere around 15.9, 15K, somewhere around there. That's it. Rob, do you think he owns enough cash to buy Twitter by 2028? As this is the deadline for him. Eh, he'll come up with it. Oh, here we go. Free girls in your city. Wrenches, you know what to do. Thank you. Don't hold your breath for Mount Gox. Yes, exactly. How about those Phillies? Playoffs, baby. Playoffs. Uh, yes, exactly. I think that's it. I think I answered everybody's question. I got to go. This guy's waiting for me. All right. All right, everybody. So thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up and a like. I'll be there in a second. And uh, that is it for, for today. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for so long. I do. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Don't forget at um, 315 Pacific, 415 Mountain, 515 Central, and 615 uh, Eastern will be the video with uh, Tiffany Wong, or Tiffany Fong, excuse me, and Aaron Bennett from Celsius to so go over what's going on with the uh, different plans. And that, there'll be a link in the description also I put in the chat. So check it out. There'll be a live uh, premiere so you can talk with all of us, all three of us in the chat. That's it. Thanks so much. Adios.